Hello my Sock Universe and let's talk about what happened on the Premier League over the weekend, Saturday 11th through Monday the 13th. And I'm wearing Manchester City because the biggest thing happened actually on Monday with Manchester City's ban for the Champions League being rescinded upon a technicality. Uh, yeah, I know I should have talked about it last, but uh, let's get this out of the way because this is the big uh, news out of the Prem Premier League. Seemingly, and uh, this is, I totally blame way for if I put like a five year uh, termination clause, everything happened in 2014. So they were hoping since the leaks came out uh, two years ago, I think, that the five years start from now. But the lawyers of Man City, of course, shot this down immediately. And City said, uh, is out of the position, yeah, we already accepted a penalty there, so why are we so? Yeah, because we have now more. Uh, that this completely ruins financial fair play, I think speaks for itself because it's all on technicalities they need to look into the financial fair play ruling again and honestly um, it's not a good sign I still love the city jersey I still love the way city is playing but there's many things about city not to like to be honest let's talk about some action on the field uh, Norwich West Ham United the Michael Antonio show uh, who scored four goals for West Ham and I think that's the first time that ever happened for West Ham in the 11th in stoppage time of the first then the 54th and the 74th the longer the game went on the more I have to say the goals were more like yeah this was really sloppy defending and Norwich is not really uh, that much in to it anymore I have the feeling Watford on the other hand oh yeah that that was an at least yeah this, this was a very important win over New Newcastle um, who took the lead in the first half to Dwayne Gale, the, the guy who missed against Man City in the, F the FA Cup, but two Troy Dini penalties. I think they were not even that, yeah, maybe there was one contentious to uh, included there. Turned the game around for Watford and that was a vital win because without that win, and this was a very weird, as we will see, it was a very weird uh, Premier League weekend. Uh, they could be in the real trouble. Another surprise result was Liverpool against Burnley or uh, as Jurgen Klopp said, Liverpool against the goalkeeper of Burnley who made many, many, many saves. Uh, I think Mane even hit the post or the woodwork once. Robertson gave them a lead and late J, uh, well, 69, Jay Rodriguez gets the equalizer. There could have been even a winner for Burnley, but at the point where the equalizer happened, the goalkeeper uh, definitely kept Burnley in the game. Um, horror show defensive wise of Sheffield United against Chelsea. Yes, Sheffield United probably had the right game plan against Chelsea, really attacking the defensive frailties. And McGoldrick, McBurney, uh, after th 33 minutes, had it already wrapped up. McGoldrick ends, adds a third one. Defending absolutely horrific uh, of Chelsea, but it also has had to be said from what I could tell. Uh, Sheffield United overwhelmed Chelsea, they exploited, the, as I said, the, the weakness, they had a great game, can play executed to perfection, and they might be in uh, there in the chase for the Europa League. Speaking of Manchester City, a uh, very easy win, I don't want to uh, skim over another 5-0 win of Manchester City, but it's just, they have steam in a good position right now. I think there's quite some anger in there, and they want to also gear up for the Champions League, because they have probably a good shot, although a really, really tough draw. Sterling, Gabriel Jesus in the first half, then again Sterling, um, Bernardo Silva, and uh, in the end I think uh, Raheem Sterling, but I think this was one of the weirdest goals he ever has scored. Uh, I think it's just, he, by fall for falling down, he hits him something. It was a rather, rather odd goal for Sterling. Wolves with a big 3-0 uh, win over Everton where uh, Jimenez scored a penalty, then Docker uh, right after the half and uh, Jota. I don't know what to think about Everton all, all, all the much. I mean, I really like Angelotti, but maybe he's joining the scrap heap from the great coaches from a decade ago, where, yeah, he is not all that successful anymore. I mean, uh, Napoli was not a good thing, Bayern was not a good, ended not well. And now um, Everton, yeah, it's a little bit different story. Aston Villa takes uh, good care of Crystal Palace, who are a team that is safe and therefore doesn't really care to show up any, anymore. That's the uh, 
impression that I have. Although they had a, a goal disallowed through Sacco, but then Therese Gay in, uh, scores two goals to give Aston Villa a deserved win. The North London Derby actually saw most of that, that, that one. Um, the, there was at first a huge chance by Harry Kane, to, who would have made it 1-0 for Spurs. But uh, I always had the feeling that our Arsenal is a little bit more mature team. That was then the goal that they took through Lark. I said, I mean, he, he the ball gets to him, I think, from Kolasinac. If the Spurs lose it in Bill Bill of and he just takes a step and then slams it into the net. Wonderfully taken. However, Kolasinac, even if he would have gotten an assist on the on, on that one, which he really shouldn't have. Uh, when was Granit Xhaka? The back pass that he made to uh, to uh, David Luiz, who is not there, uh, tells you everything about uh, the problems of uh, our Arsenal on the backside. Hyunmin Song just loved it so much that he went there. I mean, that, that David Luiz had, didn't really have much, much chance. It's 1-1. One, one. I think then uh, was even the bar hit by Harry Winks. Could have made it 2-1 by the second half. Um, Arsenal collect themselves and were actually much, much the time the better side and had also hit the bar through Obama Young. But if you cannot defend corners, all the world gets the winner for Spurs. And that's a big win for Spurs, given how bad they were. They're still not fun to watch because they're just defensively. And what happened to the Spurs that everyone uh, loved? Another epic collapse between Bournemouth and Leicester City. And it's all down to a few minutes in the second half. Leicester had complete control of the game and Jamie Vardy, when he scored, it was kind of a scrappy goal, but uh, was fully deserved and should have been more. But then they completely uh, disintegrate. Kasper uh, Schmeichel kicks the ball out onto Ndidi's backside and uh, he has no uh, chance but fouling uh, the attacker. That he only got a yellow card, I, th I found already quite curious. Then the penalties cover in 66th, in the 67th, another big defensive uh, error, a loss of the ball, basically in Soyunchi. He has to go towards so uh, Solanke. What does he do? He stays away, he stays away, he stays away, opens the goal, ah, and he scores. He was so mad, mad himself that he actually kicked the Bournemouth attacker that was trying to get the ball out of the net. Got a well-deserved red card. And within two minutes, you are down a goal, down a man, and have thrown away everything. Uh, that there were two more goals, goals and score, an own goal was very fitting, and Solanke adds another one. And Bournemouth has a little bit of a prayer there. We'll, we'll, we'll see about it. But what you see, Aston Villa has won, Watford has won, Bournemouth has now won. Uh, all the teams on the bottom, except Norwich, who are already, already down with that result, are winning. United against Southampton, I wish I would have seen some highlights, but from what I can tell, Southampton took an early lead. Then, uh, within three minutes, Rashford and Martial turned it around and looked like a uh, safe win as when Southampton, uh, very late uh, in the 96th to Obafemi, gets uh, the equalizer. That's a big result for Southampton and kind of a damper for uh, United, as we'll see, because with a uh, win, would have put them higher up. I have to say um, congratulations to Southampton. Remember, they were the team that lost 9-0 to Leicester and now they seem to be one of the best teams in the Premier League. I think they have not lost since the restart and are a hard-working team. Typically Hasenhüttl mini club in a way style. So if you look now at the table you can clearly see there are not many changes. Um, because wherever there were wins, it uh, was always kind of the teams in the same region. Uh, will Liverpool get to the 100 points? They need to win three more games and two of them are Arsenal and Chelsea. So I don't know how, uh, if that's going to happen. They could. The question is again, they have already won. Will they be able to? Uh, Chelsea, with a horrible performance, really profits that the teams behind them are also dropping points. I mean, Leicester City is imploding, really now looks like they will fall out of the top four, because now Manchester City, with that win, has qualified for the Champions League, now that they're not banned any, any, anymore. Manchester United still looks very good, and they have a home game, I think, against Leicester on the last day of the season, so I would say Chelsea and Man United will make it into the Champions League. 
Spurs has a shot at the Europa League. I, I, I would say Arsenal looks a little bit out of it uh, there. Wolves, I don't think they will get into the conversation for the top four. Uh, I would be interested to see what Sheffield United will do. Um, I would say from Arsenal on, they would also all midfield and then relegation battle. Brighton still teetering on the edge a little bit, but uh, relatively safe, I mean, with five points. I also think that West Ham and Watford are relatively safe, but you know, if Bournemouth gets on a roll maybe, uh, or Villa, there is a chance, but uh, it doesn't look very, very, very likely. In the table that I just showed you, I realized that I had the goal difference, especially for Bournemouth, completely off, and for Chelsea I was a goal off, so I have adjusted it for the last one, but not for the current one. Sorry for that. I have to find a way that uh, errors like that don't creep in anymore. I'm very rest time to summarize the midweek round. Uh, something that I never thought of. Or should I say the American way, thunk of horrible English. Anyway, so uh, West Ham it is. They're having an amazing week, to be honest. So, uh, But we'll not start there. Um, I don't want to lose much time on Chelsea's rather unimpressive win over Norwich, except I need to mention those new Chelsea jerseys and I know there will be a big Premier League jersey review I have to say they look weird they look weird even with the huge sponsor on there um, Burnley against Wolves was a rather even uh, affair most of the time Wolves then getting a little bit the upper hand um, and they get in 76 a really great shot by Raul Jimenez to make it 1-0 uh, so they get their goal and it seems like they're hanging on and then one of the botched calls of the season. I think the English referees have watched uh, too much Serie A, especially the Juve Atalanta game because giving a handball when there is a high foot, I mean that's the end, they, they didn't play, the guy wants to protect his face and then the ball hits his hand and that is one of the most ridiculous penalties I've seen in a long time. Chris Wood, who missed a biggie before, converts, make it 1-1 one, one in that game. Uh, Manchester City <laughs> in a very uh, clinical performance in the sense that, you know, uh, they converted their show off Shoshan's goal. Bournemouth was the better team on that uh, in that game. For most of them, they had more chances. They actually would have deserved to get some, something out there. And if you look at the table, I mean, Bournemouth is not the team that is maybe closest to my heart of the teams that might be um, relegated. But to be honest, I really like their fighting spirit and they're really getting a role. I think they will probably go down fighting, as we'll see. David Silva with an early goal and then Gabriel Jesus. Those were the only two shots on goal in the, in the first half. Uh, Bournemouth having quite some chances. As I said, um, they had then a goal uh, disallowed for offside. They get in the 88th. Unfortunately, they didn't have any other chances to actually get the winner, but uh, quite a remarkable performance. It was not the opponent that they want to have, but they made the most out of it, uh, at least uh, style-wise, not necessarily result-wise. They would have probably deserved at least a point out there. Spurs gets a win at Newcastle in a game that, yeah, probably everyone did not expect great things. I think the best thing was that there were actually four goal scores there. Uh, Hyun Min uh, Song gets the lead for um, Spurs. Uh, Richie actually equalizes, but then Kane gets shortly after the lead for Spurs again, and he gets also the last goal. So, uh, the less said, the better. Another really weird game with only a few shots on goal and getting a win, uh, Arsenal against uh, Liverpool. This was Liverpool in meltdown mode, or shall I say Liverpool in Arsenal mode. Um, they take the lead through Mane, having chances, control, possession, boss Arsenal around. However, Virgil van Dijk, and I have to say, I was not sure, it's probably not that this area a foul, but um, you know, he was a little bit held back. But his back pass to um, uh, there that is intercepted by Lacazette to make it 1 0. I think if there's no one there, he will make that one. And then similarly, from an absolute stupid throw in uh, into the day in danger zone, they cough up the ball again. And like I said, Aziz Nelson with the second shot on goal, Arsenal has turned the game. And then Liverpool, uh, again, bossing everything around. And yes, uh, Klopp is trying a few things and, and so on. And I understand they are not going to uh, the edge. 
because you know you are already champions you don't want to risk injuries or whatever so i do understand it but still they had they bossed that game game around they just couldn't get the goals um everton aston villa 1-1 one, one. i think it was a late equalizer for everton leicester city sheffield united I actually saw a little bit of that game and i was surprised that leicester city played actually well um and i use paris gets the goal in the first half for for them it was long overdue and i really thought that leicester after the meltdown they had against bournemouth they will be a little bit on the um, receiving end in that clash no actually uh, i think vardy hit the uh, post at one point and then he even assists uh, gray to make it 2-0 and leicester gets a deserved and vital victory for their champions league hopes because um, it is tight it is tight in uh, for that thanks to the cast ruling uh, Manchester United gets a rather unimpressive win at Crystal Palace Crystal Palace had a goal ruled out but more importantly uh, I would say a penalty this uh, it is allowed in the first half um, what Lindelof is doing there he goes through the defender to get the ball I honestly have to say it's a little bit ridiculous that this wasn't a penalty, another one of those howls. I mean, English refereeing, especially in those cases, and especially with the use of VAR, it is not good. And I know, I, I shouldn't say much, Austrian referees are much better. But let's face it, um, English referees have not been uh, at the World Cup very much present any, anymore, and there's a reason for it. They are just not that great. Although, you know, Italian referees, they are usually there, and I have seen and, and with this handball rule. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so, apparently, not given a goal disallowed uh, when it is 1 0 that Rashford made uh, right in stoppage time. Martial gets an, a second one, and United gets another. Not very impressive, but still. They get another win. Uh, I was surprised to see Southampton play Brighton 1-1 and then yesterday I watched uh, the Hammers against Watford in what a... I thought this is the rock star uh, clash because West Ham for me is closely, closely associated with Iron Maiden, Watford with Elton John. I mean, hey, uh, it was more or less who will win this game uh, will stay up next season. The other one still has a fight in them. Um, Antonio gets another goal after six minutes uh it was a little weird weird pass but he passed through gets the goal then uh four or four minutes later the Walford defense is actually saying okay this antonio guy is not gonna get another one for us but they forget Suchek on a cross of bowen who can head it in and after 10 minutes the game was done Declan Rice with a really nice shot makes it 3 0 in the third, 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 sixth. Uh, Watford comes out storming though. They thought, yeah, 3 0, we're not quite done yet there. Uh, they hit the post on the rebound. Dini puts it in net and 4 and I thought there's a game going, but no. Great save. Um, Alea comes on great save by the Watford goalkeeper uh, to not make it 4 4 1. But I have had to say then uh, West Ham is hanging on rather easily. Uh, to that result which gets us now to the following standings with two uh, games to go uh, the top two we don't need to scout Liverpool Manchester City then it's a really really tight race for uh, the three two remaining Champions League spots uh, with yeah if you look at the chances Chelsea probably has the edge and Manchester United will have a final game against Leicester at home so that gives them the edge Wolves with those results is out of that that race they might even have to fight for their Europa League spot and yes I had that wrong in the table too uh, we know that one is going to the FA Cup winner so um, since Arsenal is still in there Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United, we cannot say for sure who will get that spot. It could be that seventh gets another spot, uh, especially if we have Manchester City winning and Manchester United ending up in the top four. Um, for this last Europa League spot, it is kind of tight. I mean, Wolves has the um, advantage, but you know, there's also Spurs, Sheffield United and Arsenal in there. I think Burnley is down. And now for relegation, West Ham technically could still, still get relegated. Um, however, I think they're rather safe now. Um, they really need to implode and they have actually turned a little bit around. Bournemouth and Watford, I think those are the, uh, the two. Uh, probably will still be Bournemouth. I don't think Aston Villa will get in there as well. 
which reminds me since i will be on vacation i will not uh, i will probably not do a premier league video until i come back oh this will be a lot of videos for me to make um but let's see if i get on monday to it let's see but let's uh look at the matches first of all we have fa cup ties coming up uh the semifinals on saturday evening we have arsenal against manchester city Again, I don't expect anything but a decisive Manchester City win. And then on Sunday, uh, also uh, early evening, we have United against Chelsea. Again, um, United owned Chelsea this time around. So I actually think there will be a Mancunian derby in for the FA Cup final. But uh, hey, let's see. Maybe Chelsea can pull something off. This also has an impact on the next Premier League round, which is then stretched up until Wednesday because of that. Uh, and that will be the main reason why I will not uh, be able to make a video. Uh, and you will get the next video after the last round in the um, Prem Pre Premier League. So let's see. Uh, in the fight for the Champions League spots, we have that Liverpool against Chelsea, as I said, is on Wednesday evening. Let's see where, where 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 this will go. Liverpool would be normally the favorite, but I don't really see it. Manchester and West Ham double has um, impact a little bit on the relegation, but since West Ham looks safe, I think Manchester United uh, will look strong there. Aston Villa has to play against Arsenal. This is also, you know, I'm not rolling it back up uh, for the uh, uh, Arsenal still in the contention for a rope league spot. Aston Villa really would like to get some points. I think Wolves will probably get the three points at Crystal Palace. Now, uh, we also had Brighton in the relegation uh, zone, so uh, that will be interesting. And then there's the South Coast Arby between Bournemouth and Southampton for relegation. Leicester playing at Spurs with both teams riding on it. Mm. I usually would fancy Leicester, but Spurs has been uh, getting some results as of late, and Sheffield United plays against Everton. So, you know, almost every game here except the first one has any has some implications on relegation and Europa League. And then in the last round, all games being played uh, at the same time. Uh, Chelsea Wolves would have been a great final ma matchup. Arsenal against Watford. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, Watford played Manchester City. Yeah, Watford has a really a tough schedule. will be tight so it really will be down to what Bournemouth is doing who will then have an away game to Everton so um, Bournemouth needs to win both games for and Watford to be safe Aston Villa plays at West Ham so I see a path out there for Aston Villa but you have to uh, beat Arsenal um, and then for the Europa Leicester Manchester United I think that's the one that everyone is looking at uh, Chelsea Wolves Chelsea will need to get the wins there as well um, we said Arsenal will probably need something against Watford and Spurs has a rather easy tie against Crystal Palace who just, you know, I understand it. There's not much to play for in Southampton against Sheffield United. It will be an interesting last day. Again, I will be on vacation. You will get some completely different videos. I will probably not even see all that much from all these games, but I will try to make a sensible video uh, next Monday, most likely. Anyway. Let me know your thoughts on the Premier League finish. How do, how do you think things will pan out? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.